So moving right. on to the final division, the NFC East, um, the NFC least, as I call it. Even though I, uh, which is surprising to me, but uh, whatever. Um, I have the Cowboys finishing uh, number one in the division at twelve and five. Um, I'm a Dak guy. I believe in Dak. I think my, Micah Parsons is a, an elite player in this league. Uh, Trayvon Diggs, young, co- uh, young in the position at cornerback, and I think he can only take strides forward. And you saw what he did last year. Now let's hope he can fix those errors of getting burnt on double moves and you know biting on fake so much. If he can figure that out, this guy can be probably the best cornerback in football. Um, it's a high bar. Yeah. Um, I have I have the Commanders finishing eleven and six. Uh, I believe in Riverboat Ron. Love Scary Terry, Curtis Samuel, Antonio Gibson, uh, Chase Young in the defensive line. He might start off. This, he might not be able to be there for early season, but uh, when he gets there, I think they're going to be uh, pretty good. And and again, like I said when we broke down this division, I might be putting blind faith in Carson Wentz, and it might uh, bite me in the ass to to do that. But screw it, I'm going to do it. They're not my team, but I'm just predicting here, right? Uh, and the Eagles, uh, I have them at 10 and 7. Uh, I, I don't believe in Hurts as a passer. Uh, and if you don't have a QB to put you over the top, while I do believe they have the talent around them, I, I think he's going to hold them back. Uh, I do have the Cowboys, Commanders, and Eagles all splitting with each other. One, uh, They're all going to go one game apiece. But I have them all sweeping the Giants because I have the Giants finishing 2 and 15. And, I mean, it's, it's time to start over. It's time to... Uh, start over because I think Saquon's on his way out and yeah. Our boy JQ would probably be excited for Saquon because he's looked pretty good and uh, healthy thus far in camp coming off of a rough third year. The way I'm looking at the NFC least, as you call it, uh, obviously I, I feel like you have the commanders a little too high for me. I, I don't think they're that good. I don't believe in the quarterback under center. I That's another team that everything that can go wrong will go wrong. So for the division, I got Philly. I got Philly going 11 and six. I think Jalen Hurts and everything that they've added this year around him, that's a team that truly invested into their quarterback. And I think it's going to show. I think the Eagles are going to fly and we're going to be looking at them as a true contender of the season. They got the defense to do it. You Bradbury and Slay. I think that's a hell of a cornerback duo. And I think their defense, their offense is going to be dynamic, probably going to be the league's most run-heavy offense right there next to the Ravens. And then one thing that they have over the Ravens is they do have weapons on the outside now. So I think this Eagles team is going to be very dangerous. I think they're better than the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys, Ezekiel Elliott is regressing. He does not look like the same Zeke that we've all known. And we're not going to see him eat like he used to. So I got the Cowboys going 10 and seven. I had them squeezing into the playoffs, but they lose Cooper. Zeke's regressing. They, they've lost O-linemen. They've lost people on defense. I don't feel like the Cowboys are the same team that I feel like their window is shut. They missed their window. So I think the Cowboys are just going to be a mid team. They'll squeeze their way into the postseason with a 10 and seven record. I do have the Giants coming in third in the division. I have the Giants going five and 12. I, I, I'm with you. I think they need change. I think it's time Daniel Jones will will show you guys, okay, I'm just here for the year just so you guys can get a, a better draft pick. And then uh, that's it. They need to start something new. I think they have Dable and Joe Shine there in the in the front office. I feel like they need a new new quarterback to start their their new regime. So I think Giants go five and twelve and I think the commanders go four and thirteen. I want to be honest, Brent, I did not expect for a division that he called the least to have three playoff teams. Now, I will say, I think the Eagles are what you think the Lions are. What I mean by that is... But I was just going to say, I, I don't have the Eagles making the playoffs, though. 10-7, uh, yeah, I'm missing? Yeah, I have uh, Was- Washington made it, which was a shock to me when I was going through it. And it's I a shock to, I think, all of us. Yeah. So... The Eagles and the Lions, I think, had a two two of the three best old lines in the NFL, maybe. I think the Chargers, the Shield, have an elite one as well. There's a couple of other teams. And now you add in A.J. Brown. A.J. was elite with Ryan Tannehill. And Ryan Tannehill is not this grand passer. Ryan Tannehill, like you were saying before, is throwing 33 touchdowns, looking like one of the better quarterbacks. Jalen's rushing ability, coupled with what they are able to do last year when they decided to run the ball more, and their defensive front, 
If you add in Chauncey Gardner Johnson on the back end with James Bradbury, who the Giants have let go, a very good player, I am pumped up for the Eagles this season. They're going to shock a ton of people because I think they can win multiple playoff games if, and this is an if, Jalen Hurts can take that next step as a passer, and I think he can. I'm excited to see him because he has a tough work ethic. He's a great leader and a great kid, one that I would want as my franchise quarterback, and he's very talented. And there's no better way to figure out the question as to whether or not he's the franchise quarterback than surrounding him with a former Heisman winner in Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown, one of the most underrated tight ends, and a star. Or not one of, okay, I think Miles Sanders is a star. He didn't have a touchdown last year. I get it. A very good running game between him, Kenneth Gainwell, and Boston Scott. So I had the Eagles finishing with 10 wins. I think they're going to go 4-2 and two in this division, and they're a sleeper in the postseason big time. Now, second place at the Cowboys missing the playoffs in 9-8. and eight. Man, there's a lot of things going wrong for this team already. You have Michael Gallup coming off a torn ACL. James Washington, who they signed to replace Cedric Wilson, fractured his foot on August 1st. He's going to miss 6-10 to 10 weeks, which is technically the first two two weeks to like month, a month and a half of the NFL season. There's not a whole lot of depth here. And I think this team is going to have a lot of big-time breakouts, whether it's CeeDee Lamb. You already saw Trayvon Diggs last year break out. And then Micah Parsons as well, who is just a spectacular talent. I think this Cowboys team is too top-heavy, and I just don't think Dak Prescott is good enough. I think he's a good quarterback, but quite frankly, I think he's average. I think the Cowboys have a very talented team, but their head coach, Mike McCarthy, is not necessarily one I have a big vote of confidence in. He always underperforms with talented teams. And outside of C.D. Lamb, I don't think this offense is really that special. Dalton Schultz is good. Pollard's good. Elliott's good. There's nothing that really stands out, per se. Zach Martin's a great guard. And the defense as well, I think, is very top-heavy. Dan Quinn can get the most out of them. Ultimately, in an NFC that has so many talented teams, like I talk about the Saints, the Eagles, they're well-rounded. I have the Cowboys finish at 9-8, and eight, going 3-3 three and three in the division. Commanders, I would be stunned if they make the playoffs over the 49ers. I think there's no chance almost that happens because I think Carson Wentz can bounce back this year, but this is a much worse team than the Colts were last year. The defense has consistently underperformed for all the capital they put into it. The offensive line loses Brandon Scherf. And outside of Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson playing the slot, I'm not very high on the running backs. Shout out to Brian. I shouldn't say shout out. Prayers up to Brian Robinson, who uh, received multiple gunshots to the leg. And he got out of the hospital. He was supposed to be uh, one of their main running backs with Antonio Gibson. I'm hoping he can get back onto the field as soon as possible and he's healthy. And of course, like, any player who goes to that kind of trials before his rookie season even begins, I hope he breaks out and is an absolute baller. Um, not sure when he's actually going to be able to return. Says he will miss the first four games as he recovers. Hopefully we get him back before like November, man. I'm, I'm really hoping. Prayers out to him. So, I mean, yeah, I think the commanders, like Justin said, whatever can go wrong, will go wrong. Uh, Ron Rivera is good. He's, he's a, I think he's more average as a head coach. Great leader. And then last in this division, I had the Giants with five wins. They're doing a lot of the right things. They're actually addressing the offensive line with Evan Neal and Andrew Thomas at left tackle. The offensive line's trending in the right direction. And for Saquon's health and his money, I'm happy for him as well. I hope he can be one that sticks in New York long term and he can kind of get that string of luck any Giant fan is hoping for. And Kadarius Tony, I'm looking forward to seeing him this year if he can just stay on the field. Daniel Jones should have a better season. Ultimately, the Giants' defense is not very good. Outside of Kayvon Thibodeau, they uh, invest a lot into. But the Giants are finally headed back on track and into a direction I would call pretty good. Uh, yeah. Um, anybody have anything else? We Brian off? Dable. I think Brian Dable is going to do wonders for Daniel Jones in some ways. Because of it can buffalo so much of Josh, Allen, Josh Allen's passion, passing tree was, you know, crossing routes and design quarterback runs. I think his skill set is a little bit similar to DJ. I think he will be utilized more properly as a passer, and he will have a little bit more protection so he's not getting killed week to week. So you say he improves uh, Daniel Jones. Does Daniel Jones stay in New York next season? Is he the quarterback of the Giants next year? No, because I do think they're going to go out and get a quarterback. It's not their guy between uh, Joe Shane and Dable. I think they're going to shoot for the stars, and DJ, he can be a starter, but there's a lot of guys that can be a starter. You know, you're not holding on to Tua if you can get a top five pick, and so to speak. I think for any team, they're going to be shooting for potential. 
in the city of New York, I just I don't think Daniel Jones is really going to cut it. 